Hey everybody, welcome to Sid's Little Corner of the Internet. We've got another Transformers review coming your way. This time around, we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Studio Series Leader Class Rise of the Beasts Optimus Primal. So as we always do, let's go ahead and take a look at that box first. And we'll bring it on in, and it is a big box. And you've got some sweet artwork on the front there with Optimus Primal. He is number 106, Studio Series. Over here, you've got some more sweet artwork of him in his bot mode, looking good. Over here on the back, you've got some product shots. It's big screen inspired. It's the Peruvian Jungle Discovery. He converts in 34 steps. And down here, Optimus Primal and the Maximals Guard, a piece from the Transwarp Key from Unwelcome Visitors. Down here, you've got Backdrop included. And down here, you have all your warnings. And you've got your sad baby. The baby's sad because the baby has an innate fear of primates. And yes, that does include humans, oddly enough. All right, uh, over here... Uh, I don't know what I'm thinking with the sad baby stuff. Anyway, 106, uh, you got a close-up of that handsome face right there. Looks like he's had some dental work done. He is leader class. Up here, you've got Rise of the Beasts. Down here, you have all that information if you want to read it. So that is it for the box. I'm going to go ahead and chuck that thing out of the way, and we're going to get to the meat of this review. Behold, laid out here before you is everything that came inside that box with Mr. Primal. And we're going to start right over here with the little sheet of warnings. And you have your instruction booklet. Get those out of the way. And now we'll start getting into those accessories. And I'm going to start over here on the left that correspond to the stuff on the right. But he does come with two of these that I will need to focus on. So these are meant to be his chain connectors to put his two swords together. So... They uh, plug into each other. You've got uh, one end has a female, one end is male, and you plug those in. And then you've got multiple joints all over this thing where you can basically make it almost any shape you want. And uh, they're not exactly the same to each other, so it's hard to find symmetry between these two. But you can do a shape like that. It's kind of cool. And uh, that's going to bleed us right into the next set of stuff we're going to talk about, which are the swords. And I'm just going to pick on this one right here. They're the same except for the ends. One is female, one is male. All right, so there you go. Come on in and focus. Let's have a good time. There you go. So you've got some sculpt work on there. Got some paint on there. Silver looks good. Everything comes together quite nicely. And then on this one over here, like I said, same exact thing. Just on the tip, one is male, one is female. But yeah, yeah, these look really good. And what you can do with this thing is, let's say you have the male one because, well, I do. And you can plug it in and do that, right? And then you can take the female one and plug it in over here and do that. And then you've got the ability, you know, he can hold both of them in his hands. Yeah, 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 kind of like that. Uh, the other thing that you can do if you want to is take that off. You can plug them in like this for some reason if you wanted to totally do that or you can plug them in up here like that so you have many options with this chain thing uh, being honest with you I'm probably not going to use it a lot uh, it's just kind of gets in the way more than anything but it's some really cool options for people who are creative out there who really know what to do with this thing have fun but yeah so chain two swords and then you have his axe, which is really cool. Would have been nice if it was painted because it's got some sweet sculpt work on it. But yeah, it looks pretty good. And you can see it's got that serrated edge right down there. So very cool. And then coming over to this side, almost the exact same thing. So yeah, very well done. Uh, I would say that had it had some paint on there, it would have gone up a level. It could have really used some right here at the very least, painted that silver. All right, and the last thing that you have is the transwarp key. So this looks pretty good for what it is. So good detail in there. You've got paint all over this bad boy. So very well done. Not the easiest thing for him to hold on to. No true storage for it, at least what I can see. But yeah, yeah, nice accessory. All the, all the, uh, all the less, all the more. Yeah, all the more. All right, so other. <laughs> That is everything except for this backdrop. So you have that iconic scene where the Maximals and the Autobots meet each other down by the river. Not in a van down by the river, but down by the river. And uh, yeah, 
The backdrop is really cool. I like it. I don't have the room. I'm putting it back in the box, putting it in storage. But if you've got the room, it makes for a great display, no doubt about it. So that's all the accessories. We're going to go ahead and get all this stuff out of the way, and then we'll bring Mr. Primal in for his close-up. Here he is, that robotic ape we've all been waiting to see. Don't call him a monkey. Monkeys have tails. This is Optimus Primal. So let's go ahead and bring him in and take a look at this guy, and we're going to start with that head. And I'm going to get this out of the way now, barring the mouth. This is reminiscent of Black Panther. It just looks like it came straight out of Wakanda to me. Agree, disagree, that's fine. That's just the way I feel about it. I'm not saying it doesn't look good, but that's just a little Black Panther-esque. And taking a look, you can see his little green eyes in there. Good sculpt work all around. I will say that I think uh, overall they did a fine job on this figure. I like the bot mode more than I like the ape mode. Uh, but yeah, they've, they've done a really good job here. Uh, just getting that in real quick. And then you've got some splotches of paint right up here. It looks like maybe a little bit of da damage or wear over time. And then you've got that Maxima logo right in the middle looking good. Nice abs. Uh, he has not been missing ab day, that's for sure. Uh, could have used a little bit more paint right here. You've got a lot of gray and a lot of black. A little splash of silver right in there would have really gone a long way. But sculpt work itself looks pretty darn good. Coming on down to those legs. Nothing to complain about here. I think they've got good detail, good sculpt work. Uh, paint looks really good down here. No real hollow areas to speak of. So also very nice. Much appreciated. And coming down to those big bot mechanical feet. The only thing that I could really say here was I would have liked to have seen a slightly bigger heel spur. So, oh, hey, coincidentally, there's the bottoms of his feet. But yeah, a little bit bigger of a heel spur right there. Not that he's really back, back heavy or anything like that, but uh, just always appreciated for balance. All right, so speaking of that, let's go ahead and take that side view, and you can see that he slims up pretty well. A little bit of a backpack right here with all that uh, gorilla uh, skin, hide, whatever you want to call it. But he cleans up pretty good. He's, he makes for a slim primal. All right, coming on down, starting with those feet. I like the mechanical detailing here. I like this just for that joint. That's really cool. Uh, the Gorilla feet kind of blend in, especially from the side, maybe not so much from the back, but from the side they do a good job. And then you've got that textured plastic there for the fur. And coming on up, taking a look here. He is solid all the way through, so again, very much appreciated. Taking a look at the undersides of those arms, same thing, you, nothing but detail here. You've got no hollow areas to speak of, so uh, just mechanical detail right up under here. All that's looking good. You've got a little bit of hollow on those hands right there, but it's not awful, not at all. Coming to those shoulders, nice textured plastic right there. You can take a peek up underneath there and see what you want to see, but you do have some mechanical detail right there as well. And then you've got those big old forearms. Unfortunately, no pop-out guns on this version, just simply the way he transforms. So, you know, you've just got big hairy forearms. So, you know, sorry. And coming on down here to those hands, you've even got some detail in that thumb right there. And the outside of those hands, pretty good detail. All right, and taking a look at him from the back. He even looks good from the back, folks. This is a good-looking figure. I'm, I'm really, really happy with the way he turned out. So let's go ahead and bring him in. Look at some of that detail back there. You've got this nice silver. Of course, we'll see all this again in the gorilla mode. Mechanical detail right up under here. So that's really cool. There's your primal butt. And then mechanical detail here. Looks like you got some pistons or actuators. And then just big old gorilla paws. And even the backs of those feet. Look at the backs of those feet right there. Yeah, all done very well. Very well indeed. I have very, very little complaint about it as far as the details for this guy. Biggest complaint would be, not even a complaint, biggest suggestion would be just a little bit more paint. But other than that, for a mainline leader class figure, this guy is hitting all the marks. Now we'll go ahead and just jump into the articulation, starting with the head. You get a little bit here. It's not the greatest, but it's not as bad as I've seen on some. So you get a little bit of up. You get a little bit of down. You get the ever slightest side tilt. And then uh, you can't go all the way around, but he can look to his right about that far. Look to his left about that far. I mean, I, I don't know. No, 
I was just wondering if you could turn it all the way around if you tried to crank his head. But whoa, what's the point of turning his head all the way around anyway? Come on, guys. Uh, anyway, so moving on to the shoulder. I'll just move this shoulder pad out of the way so you can see what we're working with here. So you can go up that high, and then you can go all the way around if you choose to do so. You also have some butterfly that you can take advantage of here. So nothing forward, but you if you want to do some backward, uh, you've got that ability. So that that's kind of cool like if you want to have a pose where he's getting ready to swing his axe or one of his swords or something like that so that's done pretty well you have 90 degrees at the elbow you have bicep rotation right here and then coming on down to the hands the hands are a little bit of a treat so you've got wrist rotation uh, thumbs are fixed but you have articulated fingers but they go two by two kind of like Noah's Ark so you've got two fingers and two fingers so if you want to do something like that oh made you look you could do that if you just wanted to do that, you could do that. So, hey, I will take it. Anytime I get articulated fingers, just color me tickled. All right, come on down to the waist. You get waist rotation. You can go all the way around if you want to. Nothing in the abs, but that's okay. And coming on down to the legs, you get a Van Damme. What, Primal Van Damme. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Look at that. Good, good, good split. Very well done. Forward kick. You get that far, backward kick, you get that far, and then you start running into the butt. But if you get past the butt, then you can do something like that. But yeah, great range of motion. Uh, thigh rotation, you can go out that far, you can go in that far, so you do get the ability to have him in those natural poses, which I do appreciate. Coming on down to the knees, if you can keep them together, you get 90 degrees on the knees. And then coming on down to the bot feet, we'll just start with... You're down that far, you're up that far, your ankle tilt that far in, and then you have that heel that you can do what you want with, and then you've got toe, so if you wanted to have something like that going on, you sure could. So yeah, articulation is done pretty well here. Uh, right along with the overall details, not a lot you could ask for in the articulation. Maybe something a little bit more in the head. Uh, it's a common complaint. I would have liked to have had the ability to have him looking up at shooting something in the sky. But other than that, and maybe an ab crunch would have been nice. Everything else has done really well. So no complaints in articulation. Uh, very well done figure. So moving on to the accessories. Now there is a myriad of things that you can do with these accessories. So I'm only going to touch on a few brief ones. You are kind of limited only by your imagination here. But we're going to start off simply and basically with the swords. So um, I'm not even going to plug both swords in. I think you get the idea here. You can plug them in. So yeah, you can just plug your sword in and you are good to go. Now you've got Optimus Primal wielding a sword. Ooh, that does not look natural. There you've got Optimus Prime wielding, Primal wielding a sword and he's ready to go. And then if you want to bring the trans warp key in, you can do that as well. Now, like I said, he doesn't hold it incredibly securely. So just be careful. But uh, no, you shall not get this trans warp key. You can do something like that. If you don't want him holding the trans warp key, you're just going to have to put it off to the side and you can bring in his axe. And then he's got a sword and an axe. And uh, now now it's time to party. Something bad is going to happen. All right. If, you've, if you want the sword and the axe action and you've got the extra sword and you don't want to lose it, he does have weapon storage right back here, both of these slots. So take your pick, put it wherever you want, plug it in, and you've got that sword conveniently stored, which is really cool. Uh, additionally, if you want him to hold both of his swords and you don't want him holding the axe or just one sword and the other one stored, you've got this little spot right here. You can take that axe, you can plug that axe right in, just like that, and then he's good to go. He can grab his axe and uh, just do whatever. Uh, if you don't want it on the right hand side, you've got one on the left hand side as well. So, very, very, very cool. All right, and then you can bring, you know, this thing in, and I will admit, I don't have the imagination that others might. I am not what they call a master builder, if you know the Lego movie. So you can plug the swords in. Helps if you use the right male to female. And let's get those fingers out of the way. Wrap those around. Just giving you a brief idea of how to here. Uh oh, well, since you're off, let's go ahead and plug you in the right way. And do one of the... Oh, don't get, don't get like that with me. All right, so then you've got your chain, and then you bring your... Oh, he's down. Oh, it's over. It's over. He lost the battle. Bring your other sword in. 
plug your other sword into the hand not backwards what are you thinking and then take this piece wrap it around plug it in I'm just gonna lay you down here for a second bud and plug it in I said there we go and so there you go now you've got uh, as long as you can figure out the right way to bend this thing you've got the ability isn't there a wrapper called two chains but two swords one chain whatever you want to call it so you could totally do that as an added bonus which I think is also really quite cool you can take the axe and you've got a spot where you can plug the axe in now this is a little bit of a challenge so for the sake of simplicity I'm going to split this and then I'm going to twist this and then you can take that post or that port that post and you can do this so if you wanted something like that you could do something like that I guess if you wanted to um, plug the axe in the axe will plug in right here as well so then you could oh my gosh I don't even know what that is that looks like something out of a horror movie but anyway you get the gist so lots of fun to be had unfortunately still nowhere to put this but man you can have a really good time here and people with better imaginations than me can really 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 set up the display and have a good time but yeah so cool weapon storage right here for the swords right here or right there for the axe you can also store your chain if you want to do that again i'm not going to take the time to do this properly but you fold this bad boy up make all your little bends and twists and whatever you want and then you've got these posts right up here so then you can just take that and bada boom bada bing plug it in and then you've got storage and I guess if you wanted to do both of them you could plug this one in too I'm not saying it's pretty I'm just saying it's there so what I have discovered what I like to do is I like to make a scorpion tail out of it so follow me on this I think this looks pretty bad um, I almost said a bad word this looks pretty bad but so when you've got something like that I'm gonna do a camera adjustment here because why not but yeah I think that's kind of cool and then if you wanted to get nuts let's get nuts find the right sword to get nuts with uh-huh uh-huh so see that yep okay what look at that now he's like a xenomorph yeah bring it on time for some alien action I mean he is technically an alien right so yeah there you go that that's how it's done I don't care what anybody else says that's how it's done all right so that is the accessories again I've really got nothing bad to say here um, for a leader class price point details articulation accessories they're all on point really fun all kinds of playability here would have liked to have had some blast effect compatibility but wait is there uh, yes wait oh it's probably is this a female no it's a male oh my goodness just took it up a notch just took it up a notch there you go that is fantastic thank you thank you whoever did this for doing it right that just makes me all that more excited so while I am enjoying this I'm gonna go ahead and get into the transformation and we're gonna get him into his uh, gorilla mode so one of the things that I like to remember when I'm transforming this version of Optimus Primal is I'm going to do it in three basic steps. I'm going to start with the torso, then I'm going to go to the arms, then I'm going to go to the legs. So let's get started and we are going to start with that torso. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come around here to this backpack. I'm going to grab this little guy right here and I'm just going to flip him up. He's just tabbed in. So I'm going to flip him up. That's going to loosen this tab right here and that's going to allow all this to come loose. While I'm right here and while it's fresh in your mind, you want to take this this piece right here it is on a little point of rotation and you want to find the sweet spot and rotate this guy around and I always have difficulty finding the sweet spot with this guy so bear with me there you go so he was like this you want to rotate him around and then rotate him around and then rotate him around and this is going to make that back area right there all right so once I have that, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this chest piece down. Disconnect that. 
and that's going to reveal the gorilla head. So notice the orientation of the gorilla head. It's going to lay in there like that, but in order to get this guy out, we're going to have to move him a little bit. So this is on a post right here. You're just going to raise this post up like that. And once that post is up, now you need to take that gorilla head and tilt it up so it's facing you because it's going to want to catch right here. So make sure that you get that cleared and then bring that back down. You should have something like that. And then we're going to just close that back up. Now I'm going to take that gorilla head. I'm going to lay that gorilla head down like that. What's that that's going to allow me to do is once I start raising this piece, that's going to give me the clearance that I need to get through here. So I'm going to bring this around and clear that head just like that. Now, before I come back to this, I'm going to take this belly piece right here. I'm going to rotate that around 180 degrees and tuck that away just like that. Now you've got that gorilla belly and then you can bring his head up. So coming back here, just make sure you've got all this pushed down and tucked away. Should have something like that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the arms. So he looks a little weird right now. Everything's backwards. So take your arms and this is not difficult to do. Uh, it's just something that you're going to need to pay attention to here. So you're going to take this guy right here. This guy's on a double hinge. So you're going to lift him up and push him up just like that. After you've done that, you're going to take this outer forearm piece right here. You're going to open that up. That's going to reveal a smaller piece in here. You're going to open that up. And then after you've done that, now you've got another set of fists in here, the gorilla fists. You're going to rotate these out. And then before you get too far with this, you're going to rotate that hand and then you're going to rotate this piece right here, just like that. Now what you're going to do is you're going to keep rotating around. That fist is going to tuck in right there. You're going to take this piece and just drop that in. And then right up here you have a slot and then you've got a tab right here on this piece. So you're just going to take that tab and that slot and line them up and push them in. And then you have that arm completed other than spinning this hand around, which we'll get to later. So doing the same thing over here, you're going to open this up and it's on that double hinge. If I can grab it. There we go. Swing that up on that double hinge. Open this up, open this up, bring this out, spin that hand, spin this forearm piece, bring all this around, close that piece right there, and then close this piece up, lining up that tab and that slot. Just like that. So now you have two arms done, and now we're going to make our way down to the legs. So what we're going to want to do with those legs is basically shrink them down into gorilla size legs, if you will. So we're going to take those heel spurs and we're going to flip those heel spurs in just like that. After we've done that, now I'm going to open the leg up. So I'm going to grab that knee pad right there and open that up right there. Once you've done that, if you look back here and take a look, you're going to move that robot foot a little bit out of your way, bring that gorilla foot down, and then you're going to do a collapse right here. So the trying to look for the easiest way to show you the collapse. So it's going to be a collapse on a double hinge and then you're going to capture this tab right here. So you're just going to collapse that in like that. And then you're going to bring this forward. And then you've got that tab and then right there you've got a slot. So you're going to line those two up and close that in. and close that foot in. So just a whole lot of collapsing basically is what you're doing here. All right. And then tilt that toe inward. So it kind of sort of blends in and then flip that piece down, leave it up. It's really up to you, whatever you want to do. So we're going to do the same thing over here on this one. So I'm going to already collapse that heel spur. So I'm just going to push that toe up now. I'm going to get this gorilla foot going out of my way going to open this piece up right here and then bring this down so you can see how this is all together if you will 
So bring that down out of my way and then I'm going to collapse all this in just like that and bring this up, bring this gorilla foot down and close this piece up right here. Tab that in and then bring that robot foot up and then the orientation of the gorilla foot is really up to you. This is all about posing. Right now I'm just kind of matching that angle on both of them and then flipping those down. So we're almost home at this point. Now, if you want him to stand up in a primate kind of upright position, uh, you can do that. And that's the way I'm going to do it right now. So I'm just going to get these things out of my way so I can bring these legs back. And then I'm going to bring those gorilla feet down like that to kind of give you a stance like that, if you will. And then you're going to bring these arms in. Now, according to the directions, the only thing you need to do here is flip these fists around and you have Primal in his gorilla mode. I don't like it uh, simply because I feel like the these should be facing outward and you do have those, uh, those elbows that'll go both directions. So I'm gonna leave that up to you uh, if you think this looks better or if you think that looks better. So that's entirely up to you, but for all intents and purposes, we now have Optimus Primal in his gorilla mode. Now that we have Optimus Primal in his gorilla mode, I figured I'd put him on the turntable and let him go around a couple times so you could get some nice uh, unobstructed views all the way around on this guy. And of course I have him in that uh, gorilla stance. Uh, you can have him upright in this mode, so kind of standing up. Uh, the gorilla stance is the one that I would think would be a little more natural or what is to be expected for Optimus Primal, but overall he looks okay. The bot mode for me is definitely the stronger of the two modes. He certainly looks like a mechanical gorilla here, no doubt about it, but I don't think it's as refined and polished as the bot mode uh, as far as I'm concerned. So between those two, the bot mode is certainly my favorite. But yeah, so here's that unobstructed view. And what we'll do now is we'll get that turntable out of the way. We'll bring him in for his close-up. Most of this you've already seen in the bot mode, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. But we'll uh, go over some of those details, and then we'll jump into all the good stuff that you can do with him in this mode. With that turntable out of the way, it's time for the close-up. So let's bring him in, and we'll start with that gorilla face. Looks pretty good. I mean, this is definitely movie accurate as far as I'm concerned. Now, you do have a little bit of a color differentiation here between the jaw and then the rest of the head. But that is because this jaw is actually movable. Getting a little bit of ahead of myself with uh, articulation there. Just uh, They've got this just as gray plastic here versus the rest of the face being painted. But yeah, it looks pretty good. Nice, nice detail all the way around. He does have one eye that's maybe slightly brighter than the other. So a uh, little bit off-putting, but it's not awful. Uh, as far as the shoulders go, you can see the way all this comes down. You've got some mechanical detail there. And then let's go ahead and just look at that chest real quick. So yeah, nice broad gorilla chest. I think this turned out looking pretty good. You've got the symbol right there. Nice texturing here. And then you've got the paint. And then that big gorilla belly, as one might expect. And coming over here, let's go ahead and just look at him from the side first. So I think it's a pretty good stance. Now you can tweak this. You can move the legs up, down, feet up, down. You know, so you can make him a little more upright in this stance. But I found this to be about the best balance overall that uh, you have for this figure. But you can also see, taking a look at the arms, you've got those nice textured shoulder pads there. Plenty of mechanical detail in those arms. And then you've got that uh, smooth plastic there, textured plastic back here. Uh, the gorilla hands are different, so let's take a look at those as well. So you flip those human hands, or human robot hands, out or in. There you go. And then you can see the way those are configured. So you've got two and two. Kind of like the robot version then you've got that thumb right there so pretty good detail going on plenty of stuff happening in these arms so all kinds of sweet texturing all over the place looking at him from the side in there getting in taking a look a little bit looks pretty good this i'm not a fan of you know this just looks like two leg pieces folded together which is essentially what it is so not quite as elegant as i would have liked to have seen but you know if you squint it's not too bad and then you've got those gorilla feet down there with those gorilla toes. And back here, those are those robot feet just folded up. So here he is uh, from the back. Yeah, I know your, your little gorilla fingers are out. 
So there he is from the back. Ooh, there you go. Better. And I think this looks pretty good. I do like the way he looks back here. So you've got your spots for your weapon storage for your swords. And then you've got your little uh, uh, pegs right there for your chain storage if you want to use it. And then the backs of those gorilla feet. So yeah, um, robot mode is stronger. Gorilla mode's not awful. Not the strongest Optimus Primal gorilla mode I've seen. But this gets the job done fairly well as far as I'm concerned. So let's go ahead and talk about that ape articulation, or ape articulation if you will. Uh, starting with that head, so we already talked about that jaw. You can actually get that jaw open about that far. And uh, you can check to see if he has any cavities. And then as far as the head goes, you can move the head around a pretty good amount. You can squeeze it past those areas and get a little bit more, but you do get some head tilt. You can bring the head down like that and get it around the rest of the way because that's freaky. Uh, but yeah, you can go down that far up that far and then open that jaw which is pretty cool and coming over here to the shoulders you can get the uh, shoulder pad out of the way if you need to but these are the same arms we just looked at in bot mode so they do the same thing as you come all the way up you can go all the way around and you're you've got your butterfly joint right there you've got the bicep rotation you have if I turn this the correct way you have 90 degrees and then you come down to those hands and you've got wrist rotation and then you've got those two fingers two and two that open all the way up and uh, nothing on the thumb it's fixed you do have waist rotation but because of the way he's transformed you don't get a lot so once you start wiggling that waist everything kind of gets cattywampus on you so I'm not going to use it uh, that's up to you if you want to you can bring those legs out just as you would expect uh, up or down You've got some limited movement there. Just be careful when you're doing this because you've got that big gorilla belly right there. So if you're coming straight, you're going to run into that belly. So you might have to swing that out a little bit just to give yourself a little bit of room. Uh, nothing really in the what would be the equivalent of the knee here. Uh, if you do, it just kind of all starts to fall apart. But you do have a little bit here as far as those uh, gorilla feet. So you can bring them that far down. And if I can hold that together bring it that far up these joints are very tight not complaining all right so that's about it you don't have any ankle tilt or anything like that but you can rotate the leg at the thigh to give him a wider stance if you want to do something like that because that's not weird looking so yeah you could do something like that i guess that probably would be natural right i mean if he's trying to be intimidating you know uh, maybe i don't know i don't know enough about gorillas but i'm gonna go with it so yeah there you go uh, like I said earlier just real quick you can make him stand up so if you take these gorilla feet bring them down and then bring the head down bring those arms down and you can have him in that upright position as well if you want to do that so he doesn't look awful uh, he's just kind of short so yeah there you go all right, so we will move on to accessories now and just go ahead and talk about all that good stuff so now we will just jump into the accessories for this mode. So not a huge difference of the things that you can do in this mode versus the robot mode. I mean, you've got the same action here. You can plug the swords in. Uh, the gorilla hands will hold the, the sword. So I don't know why I need to take the time to demonstrate it, uh, but I will. And there you go. See, you've got that going on. He can hold his ax as well, so I, I think you get the gist. Uh, this thing will do the same barely holding on as it did in the other mode and of course you've got the uh, I'm just going to use it as a scorpion tail and if you're going to do that th this is the way I enjoy it so uh, bear with me for a second here just get him in this gorilla stance again or the uh, lower stance and get those feet down get those feet down we're just going to do this quick and dirty get him like that and then you can find that peg back here and adjust this and plug it in and bring that down and now you've got a scorpion gorilla with blast vector compatibility that you can uh, go take after people and then of course if he needs to he can haul his trusty axe in his gorilla mode as well so let's spin that around uh, this is what you guys wanted to see you wanted to see me play with this guy in this mode i know and then take a sword and then take another sword and plug it in there we go get that plugged in plugged in 
And look at that. The fun you can have. No, and I don't mean that sarcastically. I mean it legitimately. You really can have a good time with this guy. So that's pretty much going to cover the accessories. So let's go ahead and uh, what we've got details, articulation, accessories all covered. Now it's time for those comparisons. For our first comparison, here we see that Studio Series Leader Class Primal on the left, and on the right is the original uh, Beast Wars Optimus Primal. This is the 2021 reissue of that original toy. Moving on to our next comparison, this is the Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Nemesis Primal. And this next one I enjoy very much. Uh, this big guy right here, uh, I did a review on him a little while back. This is actually the Takara Tomy uh, Japan only version of the Rise of the Beasts Optimus Primal. And for our final comparison, the gang is all together now and it's so exciting. So this is the entirety of the Maximals that we saw in the Rise of the Beasts. So these are all the Studio Series figures over here. You have the Studio Series Rhinox. Air Razor, Optimus Primal, and Cheetor over here. Uh, just something I find a little bit interesting is the scale. Not comparing them to each other. I'm not worried about the size of the animals. I'm just saying this is Voyager. This is Voyager. This is Deluxe. And this is Leader. So they all size up even though they're classified as different sizes uh, on the Hasbro scale. They all kind of size up similar to each other. So take that for what you will. One last thing before we move on, I just wanted to play a little bit here. Uh, we're so close, but we don't quite make it. If we could have had a little bit more elbow bend here, we could have that uh, classic gorilla chest thumping kind of mode, but it just doesn't quite get there. That's about the closest that you're going to get with this guy. It's still pretty fun and pretty cool, but yeah, there you go. I uh, just wanted to throw that in. So now that we've got all those comparisons done, let's go ahead and get into the transformation and get Primal back into his robot mode. Now in order to transform Optimus Primal back into his robot mode, I'm just gonna reverse the process that we used to get him here. So I'm gonna start with the legs, work my way up to the arms and then to the torso. That being said, let's go ahead and get started on one of those legs. And I've got these arms kind of out of my way so I can see what I'm doing here. And you can see how this leg is folded up kind of in that Z shape. We're just going to unfold all of this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to reach up here. I'm going to grab this little flap right here, open that up. And that's going to allow me to untab that area right in there. Once I've done that, now I can, for all intents and purposes here, I can just undo that Z and extend that leg out. So as I'm doing that, that gives me a little bit of room for the gorilla foot. So I'm going to start pushing the gorilla foot up. I'm going to start bringing the robot foot down. And in doing so, I'm going to bring down his toe. And then I'm going to bring this shin piece down and get it out of my way. So now what I can do is you've got a little bit of a cavity that you can see right. Hopefully you can see if I don't put something else in front of the camera. You've got a little cavity right there that lines up to this silver uh, disc for his knee. That's just going to kind of sit in there all nice and pretty. Kind of gives you a nice guidepost, if you will. So then I'm going to tuck that gorilla foot the rest of the way because I've got the room now. Bring that robot foot down so it's sitting level like that and then you're going to bring this piece up and uh, that's going to cover up that shin and you've got a little port right there and then you've got this tab so you'll notice get that leg out of the way you'll notice that as i bring this up it doesn't quite line up you're too high the reason for that is you've got this little double hinge right here so what you're actually going to do is you're going to take this shin piece and you're going to bring that down on that double hinge and then when you bring this this uh, forward shin piece in that's going to align that tab and that slot right there so you're going to be able to get those two lined up and then get that pushed in and then just push that kneecap back so that's one finished leg right there so we're going to come over here we're going to do the same thing to this leg so just get that arm out of the way a little bit and then we're going to pull that we're going to bring this out uh, we're going to bring the gorilla foot up, bring the robot foot down, bring that toe down, bring this piece all the way down, bring that the rest of the way up, tuck that away right there, push that gorilla foot the rest of the way in, bring that robot foot the rest of the way down, and then take this little piece right here, bring that down just like that. Make sure that 
little flap is ready and then give that a push and all this is going to line up and push that knee and so there you have two robot legs and this is the back of the gorilla which will eventually be the front of optimus primal so kind of give you the idea there of what you're working with now that we've got those legs finished now we'll go ahead and we'll make our way to the arms so what you're going to do for the arms here is you've got this little black piece right here you're just going to lift this black piece up that's going to expose the robot hand sitting in there and then you've got these two pieces right here so you're going to lift that forearm piece up and when you do it's going to allow this to start moving now you'll notice if two things number one if i just try to lift this up and twist this right now as i should it's not going to move number two if you try to tuck this away it's not going to tuck in properly because you've got a gorilla thumb getting in your way all right so what you need to do is you need to spin this number one so you have clearance now to take this piece rotate that piece 180 degrees number two it allows you to bring this in if i can get it oriented correctly i'm sitting here talking about orientation and then have that tucked away like that once you've done this now you can bring this black flap down and that's going to sit just like that and you can see how those fingers kind of sit right in that black flap right there and then if you look you have a slot and then you have a tab right under here you're going to bring that in you give that a push and you'll feel that click in so you're sitting nice and flush there and then on this inside piece this is sitting on a double hinge so you're just going to lift that up on that double hinge and bring that down and then that's going to lock in right there so you have one arm done and we're just going to leave it be just like that for now so come over here to this arm you're going to do the same thing i'm just going to take that black piece right there i'm going to lift that up i'm going to lift this one up that's going to allow me to start swinging all this around and in order to clear all that i'm going to rotate that hand rotate 180 degrees and then i'm going to bring this over after i rotate that hand properly there we go and then close this up and close this up right under there and then i'm going to take this piece that's on the double hinge and close that and then i've got two arms done just like that all right now we're going to move on to the midsection so what we're going to do for the midsection here is i'm going to just proactively I'm just going to reach up under here and then i'm going to grab this belly piece and i'm going to get that loosened up and get it ready for the next step so then i'm going to come back here you've got this entire back section right here that's going to need to be uh, disconnected so just give that a pull right there and then give that a wiggle and then all that's going to pop up just like that so this is that piece where you need to rotate 180 degrees so you've got that little sweet spot so just give that a push like that so it's sitting like that and then you can rotate it 180 degrees and then you can bring it all the way around now you have a tab and a slot right there you're going to bring that around i'm not worried about tabbing it in just yet because we're not it's not where it needs to be at this point all right next step is we're going to need to get it over the big gorilla head but in order to do that properly you're going to move that gorilla head so you've got yourself some clearance there so now you can lift this piece up without stuff rubbing against each other and now you've exposed the robot chest once you've exposed the robot chest you're going to give this a pull without taking the gorilla head off preferably there you go give that a pull and then you've exposed the robot head in there you've got the gorilla head right here so what we're going to need to do is you're going to lift this up this center piece right here just lifts up on a slider just like that and what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to rotate that 180 degrees and keep in mind you cannot leave the gorilla head like this it won't close together properly so while you have that elevated just take your finger push that gorilla head down like that and then give that a push and that'll rest in then you can close that chest up and you've got some uh, sweet robot face going on right there and now what we're going to do is take this gorilla belly rotate that around and then we're going to just drop that right there it just sits like that 
and then you're going to bring all the rest of this down and over bring that down and then as you bring it down you have a tab and a slot right there where you're going to give that a push that's going to clip in and then right back here you get that little tab and slot we talked about earlier you're going to give that a push and then that's locked in and then you have everything nice and tight so the last thing that we need to do is just give those arms a nice bend straighten out your hands let's give him a once over and make sure we got everything i do believe we have everything and that is optimus primal back in his bot mode for our first bot mode comparison, here we see that Studio Series Leader Primal next to the original uh, Beast Wars Optimus Primal figure. This is that 2021 reissue. Moving on to our next comparison, this is the Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Optimus Primal. So this is definitely one of my favorite comparisons in this review. On the left is that Transformers Studio Series Leader Class Optimus Primal. And on the right is the Japan-only Takara Tomy Rise of the Beast Optimus Primal figure. I think this one is also a fun comparison. I mean, you've got the two Rise of the Beast Leader Class figures hanging out together. So on the left, of course, is that Optimus Primal. And on the right is the villain of the movie. This is the uh, Rise of the Beast leader class, Scourge. And for our final bot mode comparison, uh, this is a good looking group right here. Really happy to have the whole team together. So this is the entirety of those Studio Series Maximals from that Rise of the Beast movie. From left to right, you have Cheetor, you have Primal, you have Air Razor, and over here you got the big guy, you've got Rhinox. And that's gonna do it for the comparison. So let's go ahead and get into those final thoughts. So there we have the Studio Series Leader Class Rise of the Beast Maximal Optimus Primal. And I gotta say, I really like this figure way more than I was expecting to. Uh, just based on what we've seen in some previous figures leading up to this guy, I didn't think he was going to be as cool as he is, and I am pleased to say that I was wrong. So let's go ahead and jump into it real quick, and we'll start with the looks of the figure, just that aesthetic that he brings. I'm just going to get this out of the way right now. This bot mode is sublime. I absolutely love the bot mode. Uh, he could have used a little bit more paint in a few places, but man, he just comes together and has an incredible, incredible shelf presence. Uh, he looks proportionate. Uh, he just fits the part. I, I can't say enough good things about this bot mode. The alt mode is okay, don't get me wrong, but between the two, the bot mode is the superior mode. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to drone on and on about it. Uh, it's just good you know the biggest thing i could say was just maybe a little bit more paint here and there but uh everything else uh, this guy just looks amazing from every angle it doesn't really matter where you see him from from the side from the back doesn't matter he looks awesome uh so i'm gonna go ahead and give him a nine out of ten just taking that one point away because i think they could have done a little bit better on the bot mode the bot mode feels or alt mode excuse me the alt mode feels like a little bit of an afterthought so moving on to articulation, uh, similar to the uh, overall looks here, uh, you've got about all the articulation you could ask for, especially in the bot mode. Uh, both modes are really good as far as articulation goes, and uh, you're a little limited when he's in his alt mode because of that gorilla shape. You, you're limited on your waist rotation. You don't really get anything there, and he doesn't have any ankle tilt in the alt mode for those gorilla feet. Uh, but in the bot mode, he has almost everything that you could ask for except for an ab crunch. But everything else is there. Uh, if I'm going to pick on anything, I would say the head. I would have liked to have gotten a little bit more up and down uh, on the robot head. But everything else is great. You even get, uh, for leader class, something that we don't see all that often. You get uh, not quite individually articulated fingers, but you get them in two and two. So uh, that makes it nice. And you can definitely uh, add to your poses as far as that goes. So I'm going to give him a 9 out of 10 for articulation. Moving on to the accessories. These are really good accessories. I, I don't have a lot to complain about here. I do have a couple of points of confusion. Uh, I, I, let me start though with just the praise. I think the swords look really good. They could have used a little bit more paint. The ax looks fantastic. That could have just used paint, period. Would have been nice if you would have had some paint on there because that looks really good. And I do very much enjoy the weapon storage on this figure. There's a place for the axe, a place for the swords, and that's just really cool. I like what they've done as far as that goes. Uh, now, as far as to the points of confusion, uh, you've got your chain, which there's in the instructions, there's a way to fold it up and 
keep it on his back and you just store it away but it's ugly i don't like it i like this far better i i'm just going to use it as a big scorpion tail because it's blast effect compatible so yes i'm going to use that uh, and it's uh, much cooler there but yeah the stain chain storage is kind of confusing and doesn't look great it feels like an afterthought and then the trans warp key there's nowhere to store that thing you know it's just uh carry it in his hand in both modes that's that's what you're stuck with there's nowhere to tuck it away anything like that so a um, little bit of a letdown as far as that goes but overall the accessories are really good could have used more paint could have maybe thought it through a little bit better with that chain storage uh, but other than that all very good so uh accessories i'm going to give it an eight out of ten now moving on to overall quality uh, very good quality on this figure. I would like to see this on every mainline figure. The only thing that I can really pick on here is my shoulder rotation joints are not loose. That's not the right term, but they move a little easier than I would have liked to have seen. So everything else, quality is good. Joints are nice and tight. Everything tabs together the way that it should. All the accessories do the things that they're supposed to do. Paint applications look good, except for one eye on the gorilla is a little less green than the other eye uh, but my gosh they're so tiny anyway i'm not going to sweat that too much but that shoulder rotation uh, that is the big one for me i would have liked to have seen those be a little bit tighter so i'm going to give him a nine out of ten on overall quality so going to our last bullet here which is overall value i paid msrp for this figure this was a pre-order from bigbadtoystore.com i paid 55 us dollars for this figure uh, as far as the price goes I'm not a fan of where the MSRP is nowadays. It's just creeping up and I'm going to ding him a little bit for that, but he does bring a lot to the table. This figure definitely feels more worth that leader class price point than some other figures that I've seen in the past. So uh, he's not going to be hurt too hard by this. I'm going to go ahead and give him an eight out of 10 for overall value uh, for this figure. I, I think it's there. Uh, if that's what the MSRP is, then this guy is going to be worth the MSRP. So that brings us to our grand total out of a possible 50 points. The Studio Series Leader Primal gets 43 out of 50. That puts him at 86% and makes this figure an easy recommendation for me. So if you can find him, and I know that he's popping up in places. I know he's at GameStops. I know he's probably at a few other retail outlets, uh, but I found mine online. If you can find him, I would say definitely pick this figure up. If you are a Transformers fan of any kind, this is uh, just one of those figures that I think sets the benchmark here, and I hope we get a lot more like this moving forward. So with that, that's going to wrap the review up. I hope you guys got some good information. hope you got some entertainment. And uh, if you haven't already done so, be sure to hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe. Leave a comment if you feel like it. And one last favor to ask uh, if you haven't already done this. Um, if you know of anyone that may like the channel and like the videos that we do here, please share the channel. Share the video with them. It's always fun to see that community grow. So until we see you guys in the next review, take care.